Hello grade 11s, in this video we're going to be looking at the graph that represents the relationship between potential energy and the distance between the two nuclei of two atoms that are forming a bond. So basically we're looking at bond energy and bond length. This is very important. You can get this graph in multiple choice questions or longer questions where you have to answer questions on the graph, read things off of the graph. Very important to watch the whole video for all the teacher tips. Subscribe for more videos like this and for more videos from the chemistry section, check out the link in the description box below. So in this video we're basically going to be looking at this graph and be speaking about energy, bond energy and bond length. Let's jump right in. First of all as we discussed in a previous video a chemical bond is a mutual attraction between two atoms resulting from the simultaneous, so simultaneous means at the same time, simultaneous attraction between the nuclei and the outer electrons. And it's basically a force that holds the atoms in a molecule together. And as I explained in the previous video, we've got negative electrons on the outside of the one atom. And those negative electrons are attracted to the positive protons in the opposite atom. And that is basically what causes this electrostatic force that holds those atoms together. So this is how the energy changes when the bond is formed. This is basically what happens. I've got number one labeled over here. We've got the negative electrons of this atom over here and the negative electrons of this atom over here. And it says that negatives and negatives like charges repel. So it says here repulsive forces between the electrons of the atoms increase the potential energy. Now, one thing that you must know is if we increase potential energy, things are not very stable. Think high, high energy, not very stable. When we lower the potential energy, we have something that is more stable. So what number one is saying is that we have electrons in the one atom, electrons in the other atom, they repel each other. And the repulsion, not good. That increases the potential energy. And remember, high potential energy, unstable. Then I've got number two that's pointing at the electrons of the one atom. So it's pointing at the electrons over here and the protons in this atom. And we know that opposites attract. So negative electrons, positive protons, they attract each other. And attraction forces is good. That decreases the potential energy. And remember, as we decrease the potential energy, that can cause something that is more stable. And then I have number three over here behind me, which is the positive protons of this atom and the positive protons of that atom, like charges, repel repulsive forces increase the potential energy again so there's this constant balance between attraction and repulsion increasing the potential energy which is unstable and decreasing the potential energy and now this is very important it says atoms will bond if the molecule that forms remember the molecule is the combination of two or more atoms so if the molecule that forms has a lower potential energy than the sum of the potential energies of two separate atoms. So what that means is, let's say, for example, this atom alone has a potential energy of 50, and this atom alone has a potential energy of 30. I'm not going to put units to it. Let's just work with 50 and 30. Together, that's 80. But when they come together, together, they might have a potential energy of 60. 60 is when they're together. But 50 plus 30, which gives me 80, is when they're apart. So basically it says a chemical bond can produce a compound that is more stable than when their atoms are apart. So being together is more stable than being apart. That's how I teach it to my students. It's like being together, being connected, being in a relationship is more stable than when you're apart. Okay, something like that. That's how I remember it. So together, their potential energy can be lower, therefore more stable. So it says here that the energy between atoms change with the distance between the nuclei. So if I have atoms that are very far apart versus atoms that are closer together, when the distance between their nuclei, which is their centers, when that distance changes, so big distance versus small distance, the energy between the atoms change as well. And a bond will happen when the energy is at a minimum. Remember, low energy, low potential energy, stable. So the optimal distance for the bond so if a bond should happen when atoms are like this or like this or like this or like this, the optimal distance for the bond, so where the bond will take place, where the bond will form, will be where energy is at a minimum, okay? And that distance will be called bond length. And the energy that is released 
when the bond is formed is called bond energy. And it says here very briefly that the bond energy is the energy required to break a particular bond in a compound. So this is how this graph works. How we're going to do it is we're going to read the graph from right. So starting at situation number one to left, ending at situation number four. Okay, so we're reading, reading the graph a bit backwards, but it's okay. You'll see what I mean now. So we're starting at situation number one, then situation two, situation three, and situation four. So this slide describes what is happening in situation number one. In this situation, our H atoms, in this case, we're pretending it's hydrogen atoms. It can really be nitrogen and nitrogen or whatever. We're pretending that it's hydrogen, I mean, yeah, hydrogen and hydrogen. So in situation number one over here, the hydrogen atoms are very far apart. They don't know each other yet, very far apart. The potential energy is close to zero. Another thing that I actually want to mention before I get into the graph is what the axes of this graph represent. So I always tell my physics learners, and this is true for physics, chemistry, also math, when you get a graph, I want you to read the axes. So this axis over here, this axis over here, is potential energy. That's very important. And they said potential energy is measured in kilojoules per mole. Generally, energy is measured in kilojoules per mole. And then that's the y-axis. Then the x-axis is, is inter nuclear distance. Now, I think I should explain what that means before I get into situation number one. So inter-nuclear distance is when I have two atoms like this, it's the distance between their nucleus. So inter-nuclear distance. So this is the nucleus of the one, this is the nucleus of the other. If we take a line like that and a line like that, it's the distance between the nucleuses or the nuclei. Okay, that distance. And in this case, they're measuring it in picometers. Now, picometers, you need to know what that is. To convert from picometers to meters, you times by 10 to the negative 12. It's very important that you know these conversions. I do go over them in another video. Picometers to meters times 10 to the negative 12. So three picometers is three times 10 to the negative 12 meters, for example. Okay. So now you know what internuclear distance is, and you know that the y-axis is potential energy. Now back to situation number one. In situation number one, our hydrogen atoms are very far apart from each other. Look at the little diagram over here. So the hydrogen atoms are very far apart. Their potential energy is close to zero. There's very little attraction, very little repulsion. That's what's happening in situation number one. Far apart, don't know each other yet. No attraction, no repulsion. Now let's look at situation number two, which is this one over here. You can see that the hydrogen atoms are moving towards each other. Look at the arrows, they're pointing towards each other. And look what happens to energy. So look at how the curve is going. It went from zero up here and the energy is decreasing. Okay. The reason energy is decreasing is because the positive protons of one hydrogen atom is attracting the electrons of the other atom, like I showed in the beginning of the video. So there's forces of attraction existing over here. And at this point, all the way from when they start moving towards each other to this low point over here, the attraction is bigger or bigger than the repulsion. So it says, yeah, the force of attraction is greater than the force of repulsion. So that's the stage in the relationship. They're getting to know each other. The attraction's great. They're moving closer to each other. Everything is happy. It's stable. Energy is decreasing. Look what's happening to the energy. It's decreasing. Potential energy is decreasing, which means it's getting more stable. And we want stable. When things are stable, that's when a molecule is formed. Then at position number three, which is this perfect position over here, that's when the bond is formed. And that corresponds to the lowest point on the graph over here. Okay, the one that I've circled over here. So it says number three, the bond is formed. When a bond is formed, energy is released. Okay, they come together, they're married, energy is released. Potential energy is at its minimum. So look at the graph. Remember the energy, as they started approaching each other, energy started decreasing. At the bottom here, potential energy is at its minimum. Okay, it's like a, the bottom of the curve. It's a, like a minimum over here. It corresponds to this potential energy value over here negative 432 negative 
432 kilojoules per mole. That is the energy, 432 kilojoules per mole. That's the amount of energy that is released when the bond is formed. That's when the bond is formed. And remember, when the bond is formed, the atoms are at a specific distance away from each other. So they started, they started far apart, they came closer together, closer together, and then they're at the perfect distance. At that distance over there, the distance between their nuclei, that is called the bond length. Okay, so if you read downwards from the graph, 74, I hope you can see on my graph, it's a bit small, but 74 picometers, 74 picometers, or 74 times 10 to the negative 12 meters. That's the bond length, the distance between the nuclei of the atoms, and 432 kilojoules per mole, that's the bond energy. And at that point, the force of attraction balances out the force of repulsion. They're at that perfect distance. It's when the bond is formed. But then something happens at position number four. What happens at position number four is that some external force pushes them too close together. It just disrupts the happiness. They were very stable, low potential energy, very stable. Then something pushed them too close together. They force close together. And that's when the nuclei start to repel each other. So repulsion, the forces of repulsion are greater than the forces of attraction. The molecule starts to become unstable. Look what happens to the potential energy. It shoots up. That's not a good thing. So potential energy increases like this, shoots up, not a good thing. It means that it's unstable and that's it. No more bond is happening. So this graph, well, this page over here says that the decrease in potential energy of the system represents the bond energy that's released during the formation of the covalent bond. So when a bond is formed, energy is released. If we want to break that same bond, we need to take in the same amount of energy. So 432 kilojoules per mole is released when the bond is formed. I have to take in 432 kilojoules per mole to break that same bond. Here is another picture illustrating the same thing. And in this slide, you're in luck. I've reminded you of the conversions. So converting from picometers to meters is times 10 to the negative 12, as we said. Nanometers to meters is times 10 to the negative 9. Micrometers to meters is times 10 to the negative 6. And millimeters to meters is times 10 to the negative 3. Very important. Here, I've reminded you of what bond length is, the distance between the nuclei of two bonded atoms, and what bond energy is. That down there is the proper definition for bond energy, the amount of energy required to break a bond in one mole of the gaseous molecule. Okay, there we go. So in this case, the bond length is 10 picometers. How do I know it's picometers? Because of the PM over here, and the bond energy is over here. 500, negative 500. Here's another picture showing the exact same thing. I hope that this makes sense because in the next video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over a little bit more about bond strength and bond energy, as well as bond order and the relationship between bond length and bond strength and bond order and bond length and all of those things. So you don't want to miss that video. Check out the links in the description box for more and subscribe for more and I'll see you in another video very soon.